Hey, YouTube. No, this is not the same video you watched last night. I'm just starting it out the same way. All right, Megan. Um, you know what? You ask a good question. Um, I am going to try to continue doing a little bit of a series on light. Don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to feel a little better first. Plus, I'm having a real hard time substantiating a theory of mine um, that I really was trying. That was the grand finale, folks. Here it was. I was going to sum it up for you. Like, you know, hey, let's face it, man. You know, Einstein came up with the E equals MC squared. You know the beauty of it? It's simplicity, right? So um, I'm trying to come up with, with something that is kind of like that for like maybe new growers or just even growers that just don't completely understand you know how stuff works and i consider doing it by breaking it down by the electron and how photons work and guess what that's a ton of work guys that's like a career move right there right i mean if i get into doing that video series the way i had originally envisioned it the right i don't have that kind of time right now hey it's coming into winter in michigan and we don't have shit to do up here mostly so um you know i might get get into doing it what i am going to do right here though is explain to you um you know exactly what a ballast does megan um why you need it and then um you know what's the what you know what's what's a great way to approach um just a simple light system and uh why it works so effectively how about we do that and i can do this folks guarantee you hang in there with me three minutes i'm going to talk fast and everything so here we go this is a ballast a ballast consists of a transformer or two and some capacitors um uh the capacitors they smooth out the electricity if you will okay and they they make it um to where um uh the frequency that the transformer is going to change this uh this power into right so our frequency that comes in through this wire right here this goes to just your regular plugs right okay i got it running out of a timer on that side comes up bang into here right that's at 60 um that's at 60 um hertz boom all right and it'll run on 50 hertz don't get me wrong now the output, however, that's this cord here. So, you know, comes in here, does a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm not gonna bore you with all the components, but trust me, it's pretty simple. Um, so a ballast consists of a couple capacitors. You got one or two transformers in there, um, you know, just, just depending on the manufacturer, and you know, you go with two little ones, one big one, different shit. Anyhow, so a digital ballast um, allows uh, uh, for, you know, <sighs> A more spot-on signal and some monitoring to make sure that signal stays consistent and some abilities to adjust the signal by wattage so your digital ballasts are always you know generally going to come with um the ability to choose between which wattage you want to run this ballast at and that's for the output only this will only deliver as much as this is going to take out okay don't believe anything else it's called ohm's law look it up on wikipedia it's uh it should be on the first page of any electronics book that you can find online okay but uh i mean you know maybe not the first page but shit you ain't gonna get too far into that before you talk about it so um so let me tell you again when people tell you that your 1,000-watt ballast is pulling 1,000 watts, even if you're running a 400-watt bulb and you've got it set to 400 watts, they're just people who don't have no idea about what they're talking about. Okay, so there you go. 400 watts pulls 400 watts. If you get a real high-end unit, you know, Lumitech, there's other brands that are real super good. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, you know, you can set a multimeter on this thing. I think Hygro Hybrid, I'm almost sure of it, um, did a video, um, maybe Dr. B. Uh, now I'm, I'm thinking it was high grow. I know also River Rock, um, uh, Cannabis Review or something like that, but River Rock, um, did one where they, where they, uh, wired uh, one right into these things and, I mean, the better the ballast, it's spot on. But what does it really do, Megan? Okay, what it does is this cord here is no longer outputting at these frequencies, okay? So now this will output to either a metal halide, it'll output a signal to um, a high-pressure sodium. Um, so you can see that right here. 
okay um and it just decides that it knows that it's, it's electronics for christ's sake it can tell now even the magnetic ones some of them have a switch on it where you can switch it from you know there'll be a little switch there's not one here i'm pretending people but there's going to be a little switch right here uh metal halite or whatever some of them automatically do it you can do that with some read relays and some other stuff so it's not hard to do it just more pieces to break and why include that kind of crap when it's hard enough to keep these things alive now i shut my fan off for this video i'm going to tell you right now that's getting warm already so um i'm going to turn my fan not hot but you know the cooler you can keep those parts in there the longer this thing's going to last you period heats what kills these components that's it not long-term usage or any of that stuff after 30 or 40 years the manufacturer would tell you 10 to gel them the capacitors start i'm just trying to eliminate some 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 uh, people coming up with oh well that's not quite right Okay, ten, after 10 years, the manufacturer is going to tell you that the gel inside the capacitors is getting bad. That's 100% bullshit. They're just trying to cover themselves on lawsuits since that goes into some medical equipment and stuff as well. But, um, but I've got receivers, uh, you know, in this basement right now that are 45 years old and test out perfect for frequency. So, you know, keep them cool. You'll be good. Where does this go then, Megan? Where's that cord go? All right, we're going to go in through the wall here. We're going to come out the wall there, and you can think of this as just a big old extension cord. It's a little bit more, you know, precision than that because it's going to end in this little box, which is just a junction box. There's nothing up inside of there um, at all except for the connector for this socket and this wire, okay? Then this socket and then this bulb, okay? But this bulb runs on a particular frequency, okay? And, um... You know, so like if you buy, um, I don't know if it's if it's Lumatech or if it's iHortelux, um, one of those two, maybe it's okay. There's a there's a system out there, and I believe it's iHortelux, all right, that claims that they have a very low um, uh, and it's a um, box wave instead of a, um, instead of a sine wave, right? Now I'm getting a little complicated there, but but a low frequency box wave would produce a much less annoying noise. I'm gonna quotation mark noise. I believe when this is on that I that I hear a very high pitched hum in the base of my skull, even if I'm upstairs. Not that annoying. I just believe it's there. Teresa also believes it's there. You're not supposed to be able to hear that, again, quotation marks, but your body picks up signals from evolution that you just, we have lost track of that kind of crap thousands of years ago, but your body still knows how to do it. So I do believe that when they say um, that it's a lower frequency and it's a square wave instead of a sine wave, that if that's true and you match it up with their specific bulb that matches up with that specific ballast, that you would probably have a light bulb that would last longer and it probably will produce over, say, a given period of hours, you know, a more exact spectrum across the board. But, um, you know, for the extra cost, you know, that thing was like five or seven hundred dollars for one ballast and, and, and um, that's just a lot of money. Now, Megan, you see a lot of people that, that try to cool down their stuff and everything. I want to just show you here. This thing's been on for a while. I'm at 70 degrees today. I was at 70 degrees yesterday. Guess what? I'll be at 70 degrees tomorrow, right? So um, an open bat wing is your best hood, period, bar none. I'll put that statement up against anybody. And if you look at, um, at anybody who uh, wants to go and search all the major professional grows in Amsterdam, you're just going to see a room full of those. Reason is the air is able to circulate through here, and the bulb never gets into where there's air that's actually building up around it if you have proper ventilation in here. Um, and, uh, you know, that's running at a maximum uh, amount out of this ballast. It's on super loom. It's the farthest of the dots, right? Okay. And, um, you know, I've got this. Less than two feet from that bulb. Right here, I could hold my hand there all day. All day. I mean, it's not even hot. It's a little warm. So that's five inches. So um, 
So I love that hood. It's highly reflective. It does a great job, and it's, by the way, the cheapest one on the market. So um, if you do have heating and, and cooling concerns, though, you can always get bigger fans. I am really not even running one right now. I, I generally do down here just to keep the circulation under the plants. That's a, just a, for a different reason, not really for cooling in my case. But, um, you know, so this is a pretty small area. That's a pretty hot bulb. You won't want to touch that. You'd lose layers of skin instantly. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, that's, that's my video. Just I hope that explains why you need those components. And no, you cannot plug that directly into a normal socket. You, you, you do that, you're going to, you know, I don't even know. <laughs> Somebody want to try that and videotape it? That might be fun to see. All right, guys, y'all have a safe weekend. Uh, be good out there, man. And um, as always, peace.